Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to podcast number 140, where I finally share my walkthrough of the basement. Uh, so this has been a long time coming. It took a lot longer than I expected. I was kind of jokingly saying that we would be finishing up this renovation in August 2020. And I didn't really actually mean that, mean that. I was kind of, you know, it was kind of a, a joke, but that's actually ended up how, being how long it took to finish everything. Um, it has been a very, very hard six months to, to say it lightly, but I am very happy to say that it is all done. It's done enough. Uh, we, I did have to reach a point where it was just like, I can't do this anymore. And I did start cutting corners. I'm gonna talk about that, um, where some things can just be done a little bit further down the road and that's okay. Uh, so this is the den. This was a room that got a lot of changes happening to it. The most damage was in here after the flood and flood, meaning my basement started taking on water in February, 2020. Uh, we had a major, major rainstorm. I mean, just a, the, a kind of a crazy combination of different storms all converged and we had two or three hours of just torrential rain and it started coming in. And um, once we actually started ripping this back wall down, we realized we had mold, you know, so that was a whole thing. Um, so when coming back in and rebuilding, we installed a drain system uh, with dry pro. Uh, and then this wall is now built a good six inches forward from the wall. Uh, so there's like a, a space between it and there's also uh, like a liner. So I'm not worried about moisture in my basement anymore. And that is quite comforting because this was, this was really hard to recover from. It was really hard to deal with. Uh, it was really hard to deal with all of the chaos that came from it. Um, but that is at least comforting to know that we will not have this happen again. So in the den, uh, added more lighting uh, and also changed this wall dramatically. This wall used to be behind the fish tank and we rebuilt the wall because we had to gut it completely um, to install the dry pro system. So we just decided to rebuild the wall in a different place uh, and brought it in around completely surrounding the fish tank. So we kind of gained about 24 inches or so on the other side. And that other side is the laundry room. And Josh has kind of turned that into his little fish area. Uh, so he has almost a, a little room now where he can work on it. So she's got a quarantine tank, all that kind of stuff on the other side of this wall. And it's still a little junky in there. So I'm not gonna show it to you today, guys. But I just absolutely love this. I think it turned out great. Uh, I love being able to watch the fish. Um, of course, our big TV is here and all of our gaming systems and stuff. And uh, so this is our area to, to hang out as a family and watch movies and, and shows uh, and play video games together. And Eventually, all of the um, all the molding is going to be this color, this kind of uh, hammered copper kind of color, and I'm kind of going for kind of a steampunky theme in here. But I reached a point where it was like I just didn't have time to, you know, spray paint all of the boards and stuff. So I put some of them up white, and that's fine. Some of them are some walls are missing molding completely, and uh, the baseboards and stuff, and it's okay. You know, you have to reach a point, and especially I reached a point with this remodel, where it was like, if I did every single detail, we would continue remodeling into Christmas, and I was not comfortable with that anymore. So I had to reach a point where it was just like, all right, that's enough, that's done. I will get the, you know, I'll get the rest of the little tiny details done eventually, maybe next spring. So let's come in here and go into the studio. So I basically just turned the camera around and we are in the former kitchen, basement kitchen is what this used to be. Now it is officially my studio because we made three major changes to this room. Uh, I expanded that wall out into the laundry room. I extended this wall this way to get rid of the kitchen and we installed this great big giant new window. I absolutely love this. Um, this was one of the biggest changes, the loudest changes, the most messy. And uh, yeah, it was kind of hair raising the day that it got in because it was just excruciatingly loud banging as they ripped the hole in the wall and you know got rid of all of the brickwork and stuff on both sides because this used to be, it was, it's a cinder block wall with red brick on the outside of it. So it was a lot of work to put that in, but I am so, so happy with it. And the biggest frustration that I had with this basement always, it was very dark 
and you know we have some low ceilings you know here like right here i have a high ceiling and then it goes into a low ceiling so we get a lot of weird shadows and this room in particular was just generally very dark all the time and especially in the winter time when it was you know darker on this side of the house anyway uh it just felt very oppressive i would just not want to be down here i'd not want to be working down here at all um so when all of this happened and I knew that we were going to be in renovation, I just decided early on, hey, let's put in that window I've always wanted. And I'm really glad I did that because I will never, ever put a window in my house again because it was just such a dramatic uh, change. And it, and it was a lot of chaos and crazy that day. Um, but I have no regrets now that it's done and it's all finished and it looks great. So I'm super happy about that. Uh, have changed outdoors. So this door used to open differently and it would kind of bring in a lot of dirt from outside. I know that sounds like a weird thing to focus on, but um, little things like that can add up and can affect your space. And so when the door would open this way, it was like the natural put, you know, kind of direction you go in is this way. Now we have the door opening this way, which kind of funnels you straight into the laundry room, which is kind of now acting as our mud room. So this door opens, it's a pocket door, opens this way. And so now all of our shoes, all of our muddy boots from working in the chickens and the bunnies all go in there. And this is staying so much cleaner and nicer because of that. Uh, and that's really good because I put in some really, really light carpet tile. <laughs> that uh, I have to be very careful and mindful of that all the time. And, you know, before we had just really nasty old brown carpet tile. Oh, sorry, um, it was old brown um, just peel and stick tile. It was really gross stuff and it was original to the house. I always hated it. Uh, so that was a lot of work at the very, very beginning of the whole remodel was ripping up all of that stuff. And then the very last thing that we put down was this very light gray carpet tile. And I absolutely love how that came out. It's very, very flat. Um, so it vacuums really easily. And so now it's just, we are all very mindful about wearing shoes in the house now. So uh, organizing this room with all the expansion, it just feels so much bigger. I knew that I wanted to come back in with new furniture and a new organization system. And I really wanted to focus on the projects that I've been wanting to make the most. Uh, one of the things that I did as I, you know, was planning on, you know, kind of getting back down here, getting everything organized, I did so many purges of my stuff because it was just, I realized I had just accumulated so much quilting gear, so many tools, so much fabric, uh, so much excess of stuff and I was storing all of that stuff and it took up enormous amount of room, just the storage devices that I was using to organize everything. Um, and so I got really focused on that. Uh, I purged as I was moving things out to the pod. And we had a pod for about five, six months. Uh, and then I purged again as I took everything out of the pod. And then I purged a third time as I put everything away. So I can definitely say I have reduced and reduced and reduced. And I feel really good about that because now everything has its place and everything has a purpose. And that feels really great. Now in adding, you know, I knew that I had this extra space uh, and I wanted to add furniture back very intentionally. And so I started searching on eBay for apothecary cabinets, um, organizing cabinets, that kind of thing. And I wanted to go antique. Uh, and the reason is, you know, while I like my Ikea cabinets and I still have kept several of them, um, I really wanted that different feel that you get from an antique cabinet, from a one-of-a-kind cabinet that you can't just go to Walmart or go to Ikea and pick it up. It's something very, very unique. Uh, and then also too, uh, to get something that's really well made, that was made possibly with dove, and I didn't actually manage to find anything with dovetails, but trust me, I looked. I looked for, a, you know, dovetail drawers. I didn't manage to find it, but I am super, super happy with this. So this is a antique optometrist cabinet. This would have been uh, sold to an optometrist doctor around the 1900s and is an incredible, incredible shape. And I found this, I had done 
tons and tons of searches on eBay. Uh, found lots and I kept saying to Josh like, hey, you want to drive to Oklahoma? <laughs> hey, you want to drive to Illinois? And he would always come back and say, no. Uh, and so I found these and they happened to be in North Carolina uh, that uh, an older woman was downsizing. She had lots and lots of antique furniture and she was moving into a retirement community and didn't have space for all of it. Uh, and they had three of these. Uh, all matching, and what's cool is that drawers are interchangeable, so we have these wide drawers, and we also have another set that has square drawers, and they can be interchanged, and you know me, I love things that are interchangeable, and an organization that can be modified like that, and it, it also splits so that the entire cabinet can be taken apart into two pieces. I absolutely love that level of just perfect design, and that's what I saw in this. So I kind of had to talk Josh into it, like, oh, those cabinets are just so perfect, you know? And he, at first he was like, okay, you can get one. And then we ended up buying two. And, uh, and so we went and got them and it, two just barely fit in the truck, just barely fit in the truck. And then as we were putting, cause I have one of them in the office and as we were putting our products into it, he was like, okay, you can get the third one. This is just too perfect. So yeah, we ended up with all three. And it's just absolutely perfect for all of the things that I store. Like I've got all of my Sharpie markers uh, put together. I can pull the drawers all the way out if I want to. I absolutely love this. And so part of that was, you know, in the evening after we'd worked down here, after we had you know, finished painting or after I'd finished working on tile in the bathroom, I would get on eBay and I would just scroll through listings and it was just, patiently looking for the exact perfect thing. And the hunt was almost more fun than finding the perfect thing. And then once I found it, it was like, okay, that's it, you know? Um, so that was delightful. And, and I love sharing that with you. And I would say, um, if you are looking for something specific and you have a certain space in your home, you know, that you can do two things. You can either build it yourself or you can start running some searches and see if you can't find it. And it was just happened to be lucky that I found something within driving distance that was, that fit the bill, right? Uh, so over here, I've got Lucy, my dressmaker dummy. She finally has a nice space. She was always kind of floating around my studio before, kind of always in the way, um, but she has her nice little space. And then let's talk about the sewing nook. So this is the new sewing nook and this was a lot of work to expand this area. The wall used to be right here uh, and I could not expand it uh, differently. So like this has to stay here because there is a support beam here and this had to stay here because there's a support beam here and those are original to the house. They can't go anywhere. I don't want my house to fall down, right? Uh, so, but I could leave those in place and expand the wall outward. And so that's what I did and created this perfect little sewing nook plenty of lighting overhead, but the struggle that we always have in this basement is the, the low ceilings in combination with the, the just darkness of this space. Uh, and so to combat that, I installed a light on the wall on a dimmer switch. And so when I am sitting here sewing and piecing, I just turn on the light light enough until I lose the shadows around my piecing foot, around my patchwork foot. And then that's enough, that's where I stop. And it has made such a dramatic difference. I can really see all the other little devices, the LED lights, you know, all the little doodads and attachments, nothing compares. And I will link up what this light is. It's something I found at Lowe's. Um, it is an LED light that has four different color spectrums. You can actually select it on the back of the light and decide what color spectrum you want. And it can actually be even brighter than this. Uh, up to 6,500K, which is huge. Like that's white daylight. Um, where I've got mine set is I think the 5,500 setting, uh, which, or 6,000, 6, 6,000K, which is plenty of daylight, I think. And I absolutely love that. The, the struggle was always just being able to see while we were piecing and it just always feeling like we were quilting and sewing in the dark. And I needed this extra setup. I, I have had a lot of questions from people, you know, oh, why aren't you piecing in the crafty cottage? You know, do you still have the crafty cottage? And the answer is yes, absolutely, I did. Um, but, you know, a quilt can take a long time to prep and create, right? Um, the crafty cottage gets really, really hot, like 100 degree plus in the summertime. And even though I have an AC unit, if I'm filming a video, it's one thing to turn on the AC and 
you know, blow the you know air out and have it chill down and it'll be really, really cold if I leave the air on for a long time. But as soon as I turn it off, it gets hot again in about 15 minutes. It's just not comfortable to work in there for long periods of time during this part of the year, through the summer and, and even into the fall a little bit until it cools down. It's not really that comfortable of a space to work in for long periods of time. And to be honest, throughout this renovation, I haven't been sewing and piecing. I have been painting my walls and laying the floor and tiling the bathroom. I have not really been uh, creative in that way because uh, we did all the work ourselves, right? Uh, so it was one of those situations where I knew I wanted a sewing setup downstairs and I wanted that to be finally properly designed and mount, you know, to the point of mounting a wall, I, I, a light on the wall and it has worked out perfectly. I, it, is, it is better than I expected, I'll put it that way. Uh, of course, I am gonna be sharing videos on the Janome 8200 that is this big Horizon model here. And then I also have my uh, artistic press. I started using this during the renovation when I was sewing upstairs. And it's just really nice for quickly pressing, you know, blocks, quickly pressing fabric, you know, smaller pieces. Uh, I absolutely love it for that. And so I keep it right here next to my machine whenever I wanna flick it on and get some pressing done, of course. The thing that I missed most through the entire renovation, all the chaos, I missed having my big cutting table. I missed this so much. I would say if, if there's anything, any tool that I consider absolutely essential, having a, the space for a big table, having this big table, having covered completely with a cutting mat. Of course, I've got a big quilt here all over the table, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, having a really big pressing board, those are the things that I really miss the most and I can say I absolutely cannot live without. Um, so I'm so happy to have that part back and all set up again. And I'll share one more cabinet that's down here. So this was another piece of furniture that I went searching for. This is a Hamilton flat file. And basically this would be designed to hold maps or drafting files, uh, really big pieces of paper, nice and flat and organized, but I am using this to store my pressed fabric. So uh, in a lot of the situations with this basement renovation, I, I looked at what annoyed me <laughs> about my basement and what I wanted to fix. And one thing that really annoyed me was how we used to store our pressed fabric, dad and I, would keep it on a shelf and it would just get so full, you know, just, just layers and layers and layers of pressed fabric. Uh, and then it was just really hard to go through without jumbling the whole thing up. So here I can now keep it all organized. So I, you know, have my blues and purples, uh, a little bit of white and black here, all pressed, ready to go. And then I've got other colors in the other drawers and I can just pull this out whenever I'm ready to go and it's ready for cutting. I have all of this prepped up. And uh, you know, I'd like to keep this fabric separate from my other fabric because it's been starched, you know, it's starched press, it's ready for cutting versus my other fabric has only been washed. It ha hasn't got any starch in it. It's not, it's not pressed, it's not ready to go. So, you know, that's just, that's just an organization kind of unique thing to me but I think that this is going to make a dramatic difference. Uh, and it was one of my, it's one of my favorite pieces. Of course, because it's an antique, it's not gonna pull out quite as easily. You know, it's a little bit sticky, but that's okay. I think the more I work with it, the better it will get. And I've got all my smaller pieces here, fat quarters. Fat quarters, I swear, once they're pressed and flat, they are such a pain to organize. They're such a, they're so big, they're hard to do anything with. So having them in their own little, uh, drawer, it's just so nice. So I've turned the camera around again, and this is a brand new basement closet. Uh, so this was where I used to have a sewing machine set up. Uh, this was where we used to prep. That was the light over my sewing machine. And it was always just really, really dark. Uh, there was also a doorway into the long arm room right here as well. And so I basically just said, okay, here's a rectangle. Let's put some doors in. This is gonna be a new basement closet. Uh, so I've got seasonal stuff, Christmas stuff, uh, Halloween, and then all of our games and DVDs and uh, fun things like that all organized here. And so they're no longer out on a shelf, you know, getting dusty. They're all tidy in the closet. And that has been one of my biggest goals with this is having everything have a space. Everything can be put away. No more clutter, no more chaos out and around. And I 
really like that. And I feel like I've, I've finally gotten to that point, which feels great because, you know, it was kind of a junky basement <laughs> before. So I've moved you guys into the long arm room. This is my continuum quilting frame, which started out as an eight foot. I expanded it two feet uh, last summer. And then now I have added another 32 inches to this room. We expanded this way. This used to be where the kitchen was. I had a stove, I had a sink uh, for the kitchen in the other room. We took all of that out, just really didn't need it, you know? I mean, we used it kind of, sort of, but really didn't need it uh, for what we really use this basement for. So uh, expanded by 32 inches, I have another pocket door. I absolutely love pocket doors. <laughs> I really, really do. Uh, and I put it, I uh, kept one of my pieces of polystyrene, so I have a little bit of a design wall. I might put another design wall on the other side of this wall, maybe one right here. Uh, but my plan down the road is to expand my continuum frame by another two feet, so a total of 12 feet, uh, so I can do king size quilts. But right this second, it's not a huge priority. I'm not planning on doing that like next month or anything. I'm content with being done with changing and renovating and reorganizing and all that good stuff. I really just want to enjoy quilting through the end of the year. I think that's my main goal. So that's for the long arm room. Now let's go into the office and see what changed there. So here is the packing area of leahday.com, our website. Uh, and we kept our computers upstairs. We now have an upstairs office for our computers. Really like that because, you know, James Howe has computer stuff to do with school and we can kind of keep an eye on that, uh, have him in the same room with us. Uh, and while it's a little bit, you know, tight in that room upstairs, it's really made a, such a difference down here, having more space for Josh to pack orders. And I also have a little setup behind the camera I'll show you in just a second. Uh, this is another one of those optometrist cabinets. You can see the square drawers here and it just absolutely perfectly holds our products. Uh, I'm expanding the number of feet that we're carrying, Janome feet, um, for all of the different Janome machines that we're gonna be carrying, the 1600, the 8200, uh, and many, many more, of course, coming soon. Uh, all of our rulers, our gloves, and our books. So it's just nice to have room to grow, uh, whereas before we were really kind of bursting at the seams before, and it, it's not taking up more space, it's just uh, organizing it and storing it better. And that's all it takes, really. It takes the right piece of furniture to hold everything in a better way. And, and also getting rid of a lot. There was a lot of furniture in here that was just taking up space and not really serving much of a purpose. Uh, and we inherited some pieces like um, Chet, my father-in-law has been letting things go. And this, so this tabletop came from him. Uh, and then, you know, using some of our old packing um, tables and organizers in order to keep all of everything nice and tidy underneath. I love this. It just feels so much better coming down here. Of course, I installed four lights overhead. Uh, so there's so much more light in here. It's so much brighter, even though I didn't change any windows or anything down here. But uh, it's just so much brighter and lighter. And it feels so much better to work down here. So I've turned the camera around again, and this is my little Q-Zone hoop frame in this little nook. Uh, and basically this area, this area used to be where my uh, computer was, and it changed a lot. Like this wall is brand new. Uh, we, a lot of changes happened through the bathroom because we gutted that completely. Like that was the thing that, I always said that I wanted a different bathroom down here, that I wanted to um, put in a really big garden tub. Like that had been my goal since we moved into this house 11 years ago, actually longer than that, 14 years ago. Um, so when it flooded and you know the bathroom took on water too, uh, that was an easy choice to say, okay, let's gut that. I did not know that it was gonna take three solid months just to do the bathroom. I mean, that, it was killer, it really was, but, it ended up creating this cute little space in the office. And I looked at it, I was like, that is the perfect space for a Q-Zone hoop frame. And so that's what I've got set up here with my Janome 1600. And I will be looking forward to sharing some new videos on this. Uh, I am planning on putting QCT on this. That's quilt motion, that's robotics uh, on this. And having that 
run on a home sewing machine. I think that'll be really, really cool. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about seeing where I can go. Um, just showing very simple videos on a hoop frame, which I don't think that there's enough videos on that yet. Uh, and, and I love the lighting. Of course, I've also got my um, luminous light bar here. I'll click it on so you guys can see. Oh my gosh. I mean, I've got the overhead light, but if I really want it bright, then I can always click that on too. So yeah, I love this change. I love having this little space. Um, it's just, it feels so much better to walk in here now. Um, it has a totally different feel. And you know, we put beadboard up on the wall. I was gonna paint it and, and paint the whole room kind of a light gray color. And I'm really glad that I left it. And I left it just kind of out of, <laughs> I'm just sick of painting. <laughs> desperation more than anything else and I'm really glad that I left it because I think it just has such a nice warm feel down here I don't think I'll ever paint it and that's okay and here is the room that changed the most this is my basement bathroom and uh, I did all of the tile work and installed this new sink and that's kind of punching into the pipe room where we store a lot of our business stuff and then I finally, yes, installed my dream tub, a nice big garden tub. And let me just say, river rock tile is killer. <laughs> I would not recommend it. I will never ever use that stuff again. It is quite a pain, but uh, I am happy with how it turned out in the end. But I, uh, yeah, that stuff is tough. It's really, it basically was like putting in one little piece at a time. Uh, in order to not have seams and gaps and stuff like that. Um, but I am delighted with how this turned out, guys. I would have to say though, just general piece of advice, if you are a quilter, do not give yourself this many widths of tile to play with because you will get really creative <laughs> in how it goes together. That's exactly what I did here. Uh, and I was able to fiddle with, you know, getting all of the pieces just cut exactly right. And it took, a long time. It took a really, really long time to get all of this done. So that's it for the studio tour. I am so happy to no longer be in construction. I am so happy to have this whole phase of our life, of our house, of this year, just finally close the door on it. I, I am so very thankful that I have a renovated basement and a new bathroom that is my favorite room in the house now. Uh, and I'm looking forward to sharing new quilting tutorials with you each week. Uh, we are going to be sharing one video per week every Monday. Uh, and as we transition from Mini Block Monday, I will be focusing on machine tutorials, on the Janome machines, on our Grace Cunic long arms, on how to get the most out of your frame, out of your machine. You know, being able to use all of those feet and features that they come with, that is something that I really want to focus on. So I hope that you're excited about that too. Podcasts, eh, they're gonna be more like on a once a month kind of thing and whenever I feel like it. So I'm gonna play that by ear. When I have something to share with you guys, when I have something to update, that's when I'll share a podcast. So I hope that you're looking forward to that and you'll tune in to my new videos shared every Monday. Until next time, let's go quilt.